Just in time for back to school, we've got the new Lo-Fi Penguin desk pad and the new Pinky Penguin notebook. This 14 by 24 desk pad has a soft fabric neoprene on top and a non-skid natural rubber on the bottom, making it the perfect place to put your keyboard and mouse. The Lo-Fi design was done by the original Pinky Penguin creator, Bobby Big Potatoes, who we brought on board to help with designing a lot of our new products. And honestly, I think this picture is one of her best works. For the notebook, it's an 80 page spiral notebook with a custom printed gloss coated cover. Perfect for your studies or your note taking needs. Do note that sadly, the Picky Penguin Notebook is currently only available in the US, at least for the moment. However, the Lo-Fi Penguin Desk Mat is available to be shipped anywhere in the world. Also, unlike previous items, these items are made on demand and therefore not on a pre-order basis. Order now and it'll ship to you within a few days. Click the link in the description or check YouTube's merch shelf and order yours today. Previously on the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. On the bride side, if he de if we don't get him off, at least I'll decrease his sentence. Oh, what am I, oh, who am I kidding? We're in, we're in the fucking past. We see he gets off. Actually, you know what the real plot twist would be? It turns out Suseki really did do it. And he fucking got away with it. He had it back here. For some reason, Susito was really nice to him in Japan. I don't really know why. She's like, wait a minute. Didn't you kill that act actor guy? <laughs> oh shit, you remembered. Oh shit. Oh, and he runs away. <laughs> and now back to licking at people. Hey. Sneako B, back with some more of the greatest attorney to resolve. We last left off. Oh my God, this motherfucker's still alive. <laughs> that was surprising. Jesus, just kind of just, just gets his ass right the fuck back up. I feel like that's the first time we've ever seen that happen before, where an actual victim gets up and he's not dead at all. But he is still laying, uh, laying the blame on Suseki. And as after I've had some time to mull over it, I am thinking that uh the true culprit or the true bad guy of this case is actually going to be sham spear himself i'm thinking he's trying to set up suseki i'm wondering I, I am wondering if there's any possible credence to what i was thinking before that potentially he actually was the killer of or, or the potential uh uh killer of um the previous case that it actually wasn't the maid uh, uh maid wife tossing the knife out the window and it was actually was like the work of may maybe him as well maybe because miss green is still a part of this case right and i feel like that's gotta be there's gotta be a reason for that right why would we bring the victim up from the previous case if she isn't involved in anything unless unless it's involved in the greater scope of this game right like clearly we're getting uh bits and pieces here and this case itself is supposed to be related to some grander scheme um, and the reason why Susuto got brought back to Japan. So maybe, maybe that's just, we're just bringing her up here, but she's going to get brought up in later cases as well. I don't know though. I, I feel like maybe, uh, Shamspear like pretended to die or make it look like he was, you know, an attempted murder. Um, but in reality, he is trying to set up Suseki. It's possible, I guess, that he is just confused and he doesn't realize it's like he didn't try to kill him. Other than like the male guy who we have not had a chance to talk to, I don't really know who else the, I don't really know who the killer could potentially be. You know, usually after we do an investigation, we've kind of seen mostly everybody that's going to be involved in the case. Um, although we do still have some jurors we got to see this time around as well, which I should be curious to see. Are we going to get any repeat jurors again? Is that guy with the hat going to come back? Or some rotund man slash woman or old man or I don't know. Just I, I will be curious if we get like entirely new jurors. I kind of wouldn't be surprised if we get some of the same ones. Because one, this game was made a little bit on a, on a budget. And two, it was already kind of clear as a little bit of a running gag in the last one that like, how are we still getting some of these same jurors? Are we supposed to be getting this from all over uh, Great Britain? And I mean, I guess you could call that immersion breaking, but I think it's just more funny than anything. And to be fair, that's a fucking ton of characters, right? If you try to imagine... Imagine doing what you normally do for an Ace Attorney game, but now you also have to do like, what, seven, seven jurors with their own unique animations and emotions as well. It's like, fuck, dude, that's a, that is a lot of work. But yeah, I, I'm just thinking that potentially that, that is why he would, I don't know, that, that doesn't make sense. So why, because he, he, they've already essentially solved that last case, right? So why would he feel the need to then set Suseki up again? I don't know. I don't know. I guess that that doesn't really sit well with me. So I guess the yeah, if if the, that is the case, then what would be his motive if he really was trying to just set up Suzeki? I don't know. I really don't know. Unless he was actually trying to kill himself and he's just embarrassed and he's like, "Fuck! I don't want to tell anybody that." I'm 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 a deadbeat. I'm trying to make and craft soap. Maybe I don't know. 
still have to figure out what the soap's all about. Maybe there's drugs in that soap. Uh, but anyway, last episode, uh, Christian Kim said, uh, Naruhoto, hey, Mr. Garadep, where's your maid wife? <laughs> Mr. Garadep, oh, in case you forgot, you got my wife thrown in jail. Thanks for that, by the way. Whoops, sorry. It's been a while since the last game. <laughs> it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to match that. <laughs> it's like, but technically, no, it's really just been a day. But man, I forgot so much with that last case, dude. It's been, it's been a hell of a day, okay? Feel like I haven't been asleep for two years. <laughs> Mr. Arhoda, what? What is wrong? Why can't you keep up with the plot? I'm sorry. I just, I don't know. It's almost like I zoned out for 720 plus days. Uh, but Christian Kim, thank you so much for your hilarious comment. And it is for that reason you are comment of the day. All right, another thing you guys clarified to me, and it's sort of like when I went back to edit, I kind of started to get a bit of deja vu where I was like, have we done this before? Did I say this before? Uh, and the answer is yes. In, in regards to uh, Naruhoto uh, and his blue text, uh, apparently it was it, it was clarified last uh, game. I, well, I think it was something that you guys sort of explained to me because we I think we had this exact same conversation where I was like, why can people hear my thoughts? I'm basically, Naruhoto has a tendency to whisper his thoughts out loud. So that's why they're able to hear it. Um, but yeah, so that's why people are reacting to what he's saying. Apparently, Naruhoto really, he does not say this shit quietly, all right? Or at least not quietly enough. Because Susano hears everything he says. As it tends to happen when I forget shit like this, uh, history has a tendency to repeat itself again. Right? Just say, I end up asking the same dumb question I asked the first time around. Fuck me. Also, you guys said that a lot of the reasoning behind this whole, like, each game is like its own own separate thing, right? So a lot of it doesn't carry over. Is this idea behind the writing process called the no spoiler rule, where basically each game can't reference uh, important points from previous games so as not to spoil uh, the plot from those games? Yeah, that fucking sucks. <laughs> I think it's awful, honestly. I like I get it, right? It's like the same kind of idea behind. Uh, uh, serialized television, right? Ser is that serialized? Is that right? <laughs> like sitcoms, like general, like the Big Bang Theory or Seinfeld, where sometimes they'll be like, you know, there's like a maybe a main story there, but most of each episode can be its own contained thing. So it's like you just watch one, and you can watch it in any order you want. S similarly, you can play a lot of these attorneys in any order you want, really. It's not, there's not that much that gets carried over each time. But the problem is that if you are someone who is invested in the story from beginning to end, it really does rob a lot of the games of their personal growth. Like you'll basically go through an arc of each character, right? And I'd say, you know, the third game of the Ace Attorney trilogy was truly the, that was like, okay, this is where we see the biggest growth in Phoenix, right? And I would actually say that really caps off his character arc which is why I always kind of hated that we ended up just going back to the usual in the subsequent games, you know, after Apollo Justice with him, because it felt because it feels like his arc already ended. So it's always been like, I don't know, something that I really uh, wished other Ace Attorney games, you know, stopped doing. I don't know. I don't know if they will, honestly. They, I'm glad that they at least have a series of games here that is willing to uh, break that rule, you know, because honestly, it's so far, it's just been making for an incredibly enjoyable experience for myself. But all right, time to finally get back to the to the British court system, and you know what that means. Oh boy, I can't wait. Let's get started, guys. The greatest prosecutor. Uh, February second, nine twenty-three a.m. The Old Bailey defendants at the chamber. The Old Bailey. This place always makes me feel strange. I seem to get chills down my spine and break out in a nervous sweat all at the same time. Well, I didn't think I'd be back here so soon. Uh. That's my line! Good morning! Ah, uh, good morning, Mr. Natsume. It was only two days ago that I was declared not guilty here. Yes, we somehow managed to prove he didn't stab Miss Green in the back. But now this! Another morning, another murder, and here I am again in this hellhole! Can't keep coming to court! I'm beginning to think he's right. It really does seem as though he's cursed. <laughs> Mr. Ohoda, I'm afraid I have bad news. We're all about to fucking die today. Oh, wait. Oh! Oh, shit, the sick. He's here. Never mind. Mr. Natsume, good morning. Yes, good morning. So, here we are again. Deja vu. Yes, again. 
Please don't listen, Miss Mikitoma es Esquire. Es What's the bad news? Oh dear. You heard, did you? If you come in shouting at the top of your voice, people can't help hearing what you say! Oh, I am sorry. You've done nothing wrong, Miss Susito. Now, what is it? Lay it on us. Well, it seems that the prosecution in today's trial. I swear to God, if it's anybody else but fucking dear old sweet British daddy, I'm gonna be pissed. We'll be led by Lord Baron Van Zeeks. Fuck yeah! yeah! Naruto's like, yeah! Awesome! What? Uh, oh, I mean, no, that's, oh, that's bad. Oh, oh, that means you said you could die. <laughs> Even though we know in the future that you don't, but it's okay where well, you could die. It could be a time paradox or something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that was all a dream that she's <laughs> Van Zeeks? Ah! Oh, 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 no. That's right. You can't keep a Van Zeeks down. The so-called Reaper of the Bailey, the most legendary prosecutor in the land. Hmm, I look like a Castlevania character. In the trial two days ago, he pursued Suseki-san and I relentlessly, of course, by the skin of our teeth. We managed to pull through, but still... Perhaps Mr. Natsume's acquittal in the last trial wasn't the end of the matter, after all. Yes, I know what you're thinking. The Legend of the Reaper that's, that says, Nothing can save a person in the dock when Lord Van Zeeks is the prosecutor. Oh no! You've come back here to die, my old man! That even if that person is found not guilty, the Qs will meet a mysterious end, one way or another. And we've experienced it firsthand. When we're going to win up in fucking flames! A man we successfully defended met the most terrifying end after his acquittal, right here in the Old Bailey. Though he was a piece of shit anyway. He's gonna be burning in hell as it is. <laughs> Do I have to put up with those ice cold eyes? Bargain to my soul again! Curse my evil spirits to know by the Reaper! Pair of petrifying perils! Potentially! Well, if it's potentially, at least you appear to have hope, Mr. Tsume. Don't look up stupid, Mr. Arhoa Esquire! Uh, yes! I... I'm innocent! You have to believe me! You... more than anyone now! Don't worry. I'll be your steadfast ally every step of the way in this battle. I promise. And this promises to be a hard battle, I fear. Well... The trial is scheduled to begin shortly. We should move into the courtroom. Let's go. Oh yes, I forgot to say. I'm afraid he won't be able to make it. Mr. Holmes, I mean. God damn it. That's probably for the best. <laughs> oh! If he were here, I might be tempted to rely on his help. And that could be seen as a weakness. If Lord Van Zeeks were to notice, he'd prey on it mercilessly. To be fair, I feel like Holmes misses almost all of our trials, right? He like shows up randomly at the end like, Oh, sorry, did I miss anything? <laughs> At least that's my gut feeling. Mr. Hodo. You're right. Yes, you're so right. <gasps> oh, well said, look, I'm student, Mr. Arhodo Esquire. Well said. I swear on this sword at my side. Oh, that's right, I got a fucking sword. And on the spirit of, of Asagi that harbors. I'll show him what a Japanese lawyer can do. I'll set you free with honor. Oh, yes. Huzzah, as they say. Somewhere. Oh boy, here we go. This beautiful man has finally returned once again. Uh, February 22nd, 9.40 a.m., the old Bailey courtroom. Uh, pfft, oh, look at this. Look at this familiar cast of fucking jurors. I swear to God, every single one up there is someone we've seen before. Uh, oh God, we're back to old Santa Claus uh, judge here. In the name of our Queen, Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare the willingness to proceed. Behold. <laughs> oh, I say something. You remember every, I pointed this out when we, when Van Zeeks showed up, but it's literally been the case for like every single prosecutor, whenever they first show up, they almost always just sit there and say fucking nothing until they acknowledge our strength, right? We have to win a few times. And then, finally, they speak. The prosecution is ready. You know what the nice thing too is, guys? You know what the real nice thing is? 
is see now that I have this new microphone than I did from last time where I had a uh, USB microphone. This is a uh, XLR microphone and I, I run it through some audio stuff to improve the sound quality. But now it also it also automatically makes my uh, quieter voice louder. So now I don't have to do what I did in the original Let's Play of the first game where I had to go in for every one of Van Zeke's uh, fucking lines and increase the volume. Every single one. <laughs> because uh, whenever I do his voice, I, I speak a, I speak naturally a little quieter. It's kind of hard for me to do his voice and be like booming loud. Now I don't have to worry about doing that again. Thank God. The fit's ready, my lord. Readiness for the trial, my learned Nepodes friend, is not what the defense needs. Ne That's right. So this is like the new thing, right? Instead of saying Japanese, they say Nepodes, which officially I thought was like, to be to be perfectly frank, all right? And this is just my ignorance. I literally didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. I've heard the, the term Nippon before, but I didn't really know what it was. It really is literally just... Actually, let me just look it up. It's literally just like another way of saying Japanese. It might be more uh, period specific. Yeah, a Japanese person, the Japanese language. So what's that versus Japanese? Uh, Japan in Japanese is Nippon or Nihon, while in English it's called Japan. In most languages around the world, it is called a name similar to Japan. For example, Japon or French or Yapon in Italian. Yeah, I, maybe it's more period specific. I can't really see from a cursory glance at Google here, but so it's not just some random thing. <laughs> I, I thought it was actually them trying to like censor the game in some ways to make it because they really like the last game they get pretty bigoted all right towards Japanese people I'm like fuck dude but it might just be more of a of a dialect thing than anything so but I'll stick with it that, that's fine I mean if it's if it's not just some like made up bullshit then I'm totally fine with with rolling with the uh, the translation here so what you need is readiness for your inevitable defeat god damn feels good to do the fan six voice again it's not just in my imagination, it's really there. Lord Fan Seeks has such an animosity towards his Japanese for some reason. It was some time ago now that he first became known as the Reaper of the Bailey, I believe. These past few years, he hasn't appeared in court at all. Yet now he's back in the courtroom, though for some reason, only when I'm defending. Yeah. That was something we picked up in the previous game as well. Like. He doesn't come to court very often, but now he seems to, he does seem to have taken an interest in Narahoda, right? Um, which is kind of interesting. This Reaper, with his curious disdain for us Japanese, is a prosecutor's shroud in mystery. Whew, just gotta keep calm and remember us. Okay. Still, this isn't the time to be pondering that. Have to concentrate on Seki-san's trial. Furthermore, I call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You have been chosen at random to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to fulfill your duty? This motherfucker is back again. Absolutely. I had a feeling this lurkin wasn't innocent boy. I must say that I feel especially ruthless on days when I had, when my hat refuses to sit right. Oh, well, I rather like how you're wearing your hat. I think the ruthless look is very fetching, actually. <gasps> oh, wait, there's a new one. New lady. She's got a fan. I need to be somewhere at 10 o'clock. I have a very important meeting. Let's make this quick. I couldn't agree more. I need to take, take home five bob. Five bob? What's a bob? Need to take home five bob tonight or the missus will go through the roof. Hey, I'm back again too. Oh, may the Lord show us all the right, the light here and lead his flock to a righteous verdict. The British jury system is so very different to our own, isn't it? Yeah, but I feel like we're seeing a lot of the same dudes. Shut up, we're on a budget! Oh, yeah. It's quite extraordinary to think the power of the judgment is in the hands of six members of the public. And that the judge can only pass sentence when all jurors are in agreement about the defendant's guilt. Six citizens of London, chosen at random. Or at least, that's the idea! <laughs> but, let's be honest. It's just a small pill here. The prosecution would draw attention to the fact that the accused was on trial here but two days ago. Accordingly, where possible, the same jurors have been asked to return for duty today. Oh. What? This was intentional this time? Yes, of course. Absolutely. Nothing about budgetary reasons or anything. <laughs> I guess that kind of makes sense. Sort of. But wouldn't that also lead to like... Shouldn't it be focusing on the, the current case that we're on and not like thinking about previous cases? No preconceived notions? Ah, whatever, fuck, let's just roll it. 
Very well, let us commence the trial. Lord Van Seek, your opening statement, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it's not the intent of the prosecution to cast doubt over your past decision. However, the innocent verdict afforded to this eccentric Nipponese before has had dire consequences. Did the accused repent for his wrongdoing in that affair? Far from it. Particularly, he was innocent. Shut up! Instead, he used his freedom to perpetuate a most blood-curdling crime. Namely, that of the attempted murder of his neighboring lodger, an innocent English man. To explain the circumstances of the crime, the prosecution calls his first witnesses to the stand. Whoa, damn, already, dude? Fuck! Getting naked already? The detective responsible for investigating the scene, and the accused himself. Wow, Suzuki's actually going up there too? Okay. Yeah, what's up? Got my fish and chips, I'm ready for this. Witnesses, your name and occupations, please. Yes, sir. Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector at Scotland Yards, Homicide Division, and one of the few characters who didn't have to get his name replaced because of Conan Doyle horseshit. Ah, uh, Seki Nasume from the Empire of Japan. Uh, my government ordered me to come here as a student to study your language and culture. Mr. Natsume. Y yes my lord, sir. I'm quite sure I'm not mistaken that you swore an oath never to sit foot in my courtroom again. I remember as if it were yesterday. <laughs> the day before in fact my lord, but close enough. <laughs> Believe me, this is the last place I want to be. Inspector, let's hear from your f you first. Explain the case for the court. Right you are, sir. The incident occurred at the Gerdeb household where the defendant was, has lodgings. In the ground floor room of the, vic of the victim, Mr. William Shamspear. The defendant has already admitted to visiting the victim on the night in question. Mr. Shamsmere collapsed in his room as a result of poison by stri strike nine? It's probably not how you say it. Strychnine? It looks like it pronounced strike nine, but oh, I'm just gonna go strike nine. He was found the following morning where the, the landlord, suspecting something was wrong, broke down the door. Which I mean, I broke down the door. This means I presume that the door to the victim's room was locked at the time of the incident. Correct, my lord. It was locked from the inside, making entry to, to or exit from the room impossible. Although the victim, Mr. Shamsmere, lives to tell the tale, he very nearly didn't. The man was halfway to heaven when we first found him. Hmm. I was the first officer on the scene, my lord. And I have a photographic print here that I took at the time to show how it looked. Ah, oh, she fucking dead. Yes, a chilling scene indeed. This man looks very much deceased. That's right. Everyone present b believed that exactly what he was. I guess, I mean, was this pulse? I mean, did they check his pulse? I want to know that. Very well, I should accept this photographic print as evidence for the court. A photographic print of the scene taken by the police upon the arrival, the victim can be seen unconscious at the table having been poisoned. Uh... Any examination? It's interesting how you can do this with the magnifying glass, but it doesn't actually like amount to anything. Like I can't actually like examine anything in here. I'm just like looking at shit. Now then, Mr. Natsume. Uh, yes, yes, yes! As an offended, do you have anything to say at this juncture? Oh, we don't usually do this. We don't usually have the defendants come up here and talk at all. Uh, I didn't do it? All right, that's enough. Get out of here. They're, they're, they're haunted. Haunted by evil spirits. Oh, good gracious, what's haunted? My, my logics! There's been a whole series of strange happenings in my logics! The tenant before me died in mysterious circumstances! A woman was stabbed by no one on the street outside! My neighbor was poisoned! And me! What about me? I've been nearly killed countless times! Killed, Mr. Natsume? How? Even on that fateful night, it happened. When I returned from Mr. Shamsu's room, I lit my gas stove and climbed into bed. But before long, the stove went out, and somebody tried to kill me! You must always extinguish all fires before retiring for the night, Mr. Natsume. But it's so cold! My, my runny nose would freeze. 
the point is, I, I didn't poison my neighbor. Oh, why am I being accused of this? Why, why is my existence so cursed? Thank you, witnesses. I believe I have a reasonably clear picture of events. If I could raise one more point, my lord. One more conclusive point. Conclusive? Go on. Fortunately, the victim, Mr. Shamspear, has regained consciousness after his ordeal. And he has named the true culprit. The poison consumed by the victim was administered in a cup of tea that he drank on the night in question. Tea, my lord, that was brought to the victim's room by the accused. The accused? Good grief! Good grief. Order! Ord! Ordar! Ordar? Ordar! <laughs> That's my favorite Star Wars character, Ordar Dar Banks. <laughs> Interesting, is that... Really? Is that just the... Are, is it, are they just doing like a phonetic thing where he's like saying, Ordar, like really bellowy? Or is it... Is that actually how they spell the word order? Well, I made mean, a specific kind of order for the courtroom, but they spell it differently in Britain or something. That could be the case. Interesting. Uh, order, order. Yes, that's the crux of this whole case. If Seki-san is innocent, then why? Why has the victim accused him? Well, Mr. Natsume, what have you to say to this accusation? That evening, yes, I did take some freshly brewed tea with me when I visited Mr. Shamster's room as a gift. The public water pump outside always freezes at night, so I bought bottled water especially to make it. And this is the result! Never will I touch tea again! Never! The public pump was frozen, you say? That's not information we've heard before. That will do, thank you. Now, according to our laws, the defense must have up the opportunity to cross-examine witnesses at least once. Therefore, I call upon these witnesses now for a formal testimony. I presume the prosecution has no objection. None whatsoever, my lord. Good. Then you will give your account of events of the night in question to the court now. Yes! Yes! My lord! Do we do this in previous cases? Do we always have the actual... I don't remember that. Is that, is that not something we did in the uh, regular Ace Attorney games? Usually the defendants are just like, yeah, you don't get to say shit. <laughs> I mean, usually the detective will come up like this. The Cast Dark Knight. It was around 9 o'clock that evening when I visited my neighbor, and I took some tea with me as a gift. We had a heated literary debate over a nice hot drink, after which I went back to my room at around 11. A hug! My tea was completely harmless! He couldn't have locked the door behind me otherwise, could he? Strike nine takes some time to have an effect on the body. People don't kill over immediately after taking it. The victim would have been perfectly able to lock the door after his guest left. The argument still stands. Hmm, yes, I see. It all seems relatively straightforward. Excuse me, but that testimony does raise an one rather crucial point, I think. Mr. Natsume claims his tea to have been harmless. Presumably, though, the teacups have been examined for traces of poison, haven't they? Why didn't I think of that? Well, as it happens, no. We haven't been able to. What? Did I hear you correctly, Inspector? Scotland Yard has failed to examine the suspect's substance. How could you have overlooked something so important? Is that the first thing you should have done? My learned Nipponese friend is falsely incensed. The inspector said Scotland Yard was unable to examine the tea, not that it was overlooked. Unable? Why? It's simple enough. There was none left. Not a drop. So it must have been very thirsty indeed. There was a little bit of, like, residue, like a ring left on the cup. Couldn't they have, like, swapped that? With current scientific techniques, it's not possible to test for poison under such circumstances. We only need a drop. But that one drop does actually have to exist, funnily enough. Hmm, okay. Hmm. The lack of examination notwithstanding, it appears nothing other than the tea passed the victim's lips on the night in question. I see. Thank you. The matter is clear. Cast your eyes over the jury, my learned friend. What? You can see it in their faces, I'm sure. The recognition of the, the accused's guilt. Your client's fate is all but sealed. 
in mere moments from now, you will lose, and your compatriot will be damned for all eternity. He's right. I can feel six of the jurors looking daggers at me. Better slap these cheeks. Woo! But I can't let them beat me down. Only I can do that. And Susan, no, I won't. Counsel of the defense, proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, my lord! Okie dokie. Bring it on, Mr. Van Zeek, sir. Esquire. Locum. <laughs> All right. Uh, it was around 9 o'clock that evening when I visited my neighbor and I took some tea with me as a gift. Hold it! Hold it! Were you and your neighbor good friends then? Uh, no! We were friends! Not at all! Not at all! Never, ever! A simple no would have sufficed. We're trying to make sure you don't have a motive, man. Come on! Then, um, why did you decide to pay him a visit? Mr. Shamspear fancies himself as a great literary knowledge. As this fellow scholar of English literature, we find much to talk about together. Come now. No Nipponese could understand the finer points of English literature. And on the night in question, that was the topic of conversation as well, I presume. It was the day of my last trial when I was acquitted. I just arrived back at my lodgings. When I ran to Mr. Shamespear outside on the street, that was around six o'clock. We exchanged one or two pleasantries, but it soon turned to a heated discussion. He was on his way out at the time, though. So, I promised to visit his room that evening at nine to continue our debate. But did I have ill intentions? No! Not one! Not two! Not any! Not at all! Never! Ever! <laughs> I keep expecting to go further, so I'm like, <laughs> never, ever! A simple no would have sufficed, I feel. Then tell the court what did happen when you visited the victim's room. We had a heated literary debate over a nice hot drink, after which I went back to my room at around 11. Hold it! Mata! A literary debate about Shakespeare's works? I think you, you said, didn't you? Shakespeare? Ah, uh, a very worthy topic of conversation, I must say. Dude, he was like the, he was the hottest shit back then, right? He was the Netflix of the fucking 1800s. Oh, yes, my lord. <gasps> Romeo and Juliet, who was stronger? It was a profoundly pleasurable parley. Romeo and Juliet? Who was stronger? I know I'm gonna regret asking this, but how did the debate go? Well, we both agreed that we would reach a conclusion more quickly with a reenactment. So we battled it out, in Greco-Roman style, naturally. What? Mr. Shamsfield had all sorts of costumes in his room for so just, a, just such a contest. So when you say a reenactment, you mean... You were actually in costumes? He is Romeo, and I is Juliet. And after a vigorous wild tussle, <laughs> I as Juliet came out on top. A victory I'll cherish forever. I dare not imagine the terrible scene of carnage. <laughs> Sounds kinky. The fact remains that it was you who prepared the tea and took it to the victim, correct? I boiled the water in my room and made a pot to take with me. I'd heard that he was too poor to have tea himself, as you see. It's true. There was no sign of any tea leaves in the man's room. Just soap. Lots and lots of soap. I wanted to do something nice. To be friendly. So why is everyone looking at me with such suspicion? My tea was harmless. Of course it was. And do you have any basis for that statement, witness? Uh, Ark! My tea was completely harmless. He couldn't have locked the door behind me otherwise, could he? Hold it! Yes, there was not a drop of tea left in the victim's uh, room anywhere, was there? That's correct. Anyone would, th would think the fellow had never had a pot of tea before. He must have licked it dry. Which is a pity, because one drop is all we would have needed to analyze the poison. And you say that you returned home to your room at 11 o'clock, Mr. Natsume? Yes, definitely. By heaven and earth, I swear it. The landlord was able to verify that, as it happens. He confirmed that the defendant went back to his room at 11 that night. And how is the landlord able to attest to this? He, um, said it was the lamps, I believe. The lamps, Inspector? When the tenants return to their rooms and start using gas, lamps in other parts of the house flicker. Yes, Mr. Garrett seems to pay a lot of attention to the comings and goings of his tenants. There's only one key to Mr. Shamster's room. I know that for certain. So he must have locked the door himself from inside his room. 
The victim has confirmed that to be the case, yes. It's all right. My tea was harmless. Completely harmless. If you take poison, you die. Everyone knows that. It's not that simple, I'm afraid. <sighs> what do you mean? Uh, strike nine takes some time to have an effect on the body. People don't kill over immediately after taking Good. it. How long does it take for symptoms to appear then? Going to the corner I was speaking to at the yard, uh, about 30 minutes after the poison's consumed. Then the victim suffers violent convulsions, cramping, and stiffness, and eventually dies from asphyxiation. So there's a 30 minute interval between when the poison is ingested and the onset of the symptoms. There seem to be a lot of different types of poison in the world, that's for sure. Hope I don't get poisoned. Oh dear, death by poisoning again. It's always so awful. 30 minutes is a long time. Certainly long enough for the victim to have locked the door behind the accused after he left. Can't deny that. And it further degrades the Sekisan's alibi. I have the medical report from the doctor who examined the victim here, my lord. It spells out, spells it out, really. The accused is the only person who could have done it. Very well. The court will add this report to the court record as evidence. A report issued by Scotland Yard's medical officer. It obviously mentions the poison as well as other details gleaned during the police investigation. Okay. Let's have a look -see doodle Uh, victim William Shanspear. Ingestion of a small quantity of Strike 9 toxic effects present 30 minutes after ingestion. High likelihood of the substance having been mixed with the tea the victim was drinking, but no sample could be attained for testing. Uh, investigative conclusions. The poison incident, poisoning incident occurred at around 1.30 a.m. on the 21st of February. Assessed from the victim's pocket watch that appears to have broken when the man collapsed after the delayed onset of symptoms. No container for the poison was found at the scene. Oh, that's interesting. That's going to definitely play into something there. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yes. I see it here. Delayed onset of symptoms. Great. Uh, the victim would have been perfectly able to lock the door after his guest left. The argument still stands. The argument still stands, you say. This is what Mr. Asume has been saying, isn't it? The pair of them drank tea together that night. So if there was poison in it, the victim wouldn't have been able to lock the door after the accused left later on. Exactly! Oh, me and my tea are innocent! Sweet and innocent, I tell you! I'm afraid, sir, that doesn't follow. You see, strike nine is a slow acting poison. In other words, it takes time for symptoms to appear. So, you could have left the room up to 30 minutes after the victim drank the tea. And as long as you did that, Mr. Sham Shamspear could have locked the door after you'd gone. But, but no! We drank the tea straight away. The battle over whether Jim Romeo and Julia was stronger, that came after the tea. Do you have any evidence to support that statement? In my great homeland, the Empire of Japan, we have a saying. <gasps> Drink tea while it's hot! Sure, a proverb will satisfy the prosecution. Certainly. I'm afraid there's no conclusive proof to support the defendant's assertion. On the contrary, there are sufficient grounds to infer his guilt in this matter. D -d 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 no! That's the extent of their testimony, is it? I could voice a personal opinion, Mr. Narohoto. Of course. Go ahead. Mr. Asume is arguing for his innocence so adamantly and so persistently. Yet Inspector Gre Gregson just brushes what he says aside. It really, it's really quite infuriating. I agree. So we need to find an inconsistency in what the inspector is saying, I think. I'm afraid so. As things stand, the jurors are sure to find Mr. Nasume guilty. As I see it, what we need to focus on is the poison and the tea. Let's listen carefully to this testimony again. Okay. Yes. Just want to glean some of that information first. Strike 9 takes some time to take effect on the body. People don't kill over immediately. The victim would have been perfectly able to lock the door after his guest left. The argument still stands. Ah. Okay. Yeah, it's... The times don't match up. After which, I went back to my room at around 11, but they're saying he would have died at 1.30, right? In the autopsy report here? Yeah, at 1.30 a.m. That's way beyond 30 minutes. Objection. The argument still stands, you say? I think not, Inspector. Come again? I think you'll find that you've overlooked a very significant chronological inconsistency here. Chrono what? 
What are you all about? According to this report, the victim must have consumed the poison at around 1.30 in the morning. And yet, the defendant, Mr. Asume, left the victim's room at 11. Ah! Yes, that's right. And there's more than two hours of missing time there. Ah! In other words, if there was a poison, if there was poison in the tea that Mr. Asume brought to the victim's room, how could the victim have fallen ill to it? Two and a half full hours after the defendant left. Ah! <laughs> oh my God, like Greg said, and said you did it the exact same time. Stop your perfectly synchronized freaking out. The defense's argument is entirely reasonable. How do you respond, Lord Van Zeex? Respond by pouring myself another glass of brandy. Mm. It's been a long time since I've had a glass as delicious as this. Mm. Pray forgive the discourtesy of my mind has wandered. I was considering what cuisine would best complement the contents of my hallowed chalice this luncheon. How could it have happened, you ask? Fuck! I do hate to shatter illusions, but my Nipponese friend appears to be chasing a phantom idea. The phantom? No, that's a different game. Is it so hard to imagine the victim drink his tea after the accused had left? For example, at the time stated in the medical report. Yes, at around half past one. Mr. Asume brought the tea with him to drink together with his neighbor. And in Japan, there's a well-known saying, drink tea while it's hot. Objection. Objection. Oh my God, my voice is fucking perfect. Jesus Christ. Vansik's voice. Oh my God, I got goosebumps. And in my country, there's an even more apt saying. There is nothing more refreshing than cold tea. The, the point is, if there is such a, was such a long gap, there may be other ways to explain how the victim came to be poisoned. Other possibilities. What sort of possibilities, Council? Uh, others? Well, for example, the man could have had another visitor. Another visitor? That's a very bold assertion, my learned friend. From someone who has nothing to substantiate it. Or, or, the victim could have taken the poison of his own volition. You suggest this may have been a suicide counsel? Objection! Objection! Mr. Shamspear has categorically denied suicide. The idea can and must be discounted. Eh, oh god, my slam went away. <laughs> it still happens. But, but he could be lying. <laughs> I'm really pondering that statement there. Something wrong, Lord Van Zeeks. I was listening to the sound of the carriage pulling up outside the courtroom. Pray, forgive the discourtesy. C carriage? What carriage? It would seem that the key player in this case has just arrived. Hold it! I think this is probably Shamspear. Out, out, a brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. <gasps> oh my god. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. Oh ho ho! It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Hey, that's the lie I said last time. Yeah, I said that. I did that. Damn it, light's intense. Who, we have a spotlight in here? Who, sir, are you? William Shamspear, my lord. Alas, twas I undone by these bitter events. I am the victim. What? What is he doing here? And I'm up here already. Hello. Quiet. The prosecution seeks to call this gentleman to the stand. No, when he's already there. With this testimony, my learned friend's future resistance will be utterly crushed. You're calling him as a witness? Very well, counsel. I grant your request with interest. I'm curious to discover what the court shall hear from the victim himself. Oh, uh, hello. 
Am I misremembering in that he had a mask in the last game that actually covered his face? Or did he just look like this? I mean, I think he, I think he had the same outfit, but I, I, I thought for sure he had like a mask that covered over his eyes. Happy am I, Shamspear, to regale thee with my tale of woe, my lord. But, but I still have my own tale to, ta tale to tell. My own tale of wo worse woe. I can regale the core with the tale of my perfect innocence in perfect English. That will do, Mr. Natsume. Let the court now hear from the victim. Get off my stand. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, there's that guy. There's Popeye, man. All right, so that's Mr. Shamspear. But who's that other man beside him? I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. Pop, pop. Yes, I think. I feel sure that we've caught a glimpse of that man before. State your names and occupations for the court, please, witnesses. A writer of words so sweet they do send to the breeze. An inventor of ideas so profound they compose the earth. The unrivaled poet, the unmatched scribe, William Shakespeare. Were the great bard be recalled the life to life anew? Lo, what a magnificent man. Good fellows, I am he who ponders such a miracle. William Shakespeare. You definitely, definitely want to reconsider that name. Okay, uh, where should I go with this guy? Oh, um, the, the name's Miedemann. Adron B. Miedemann. That kind of, that one kind of works. It's kind of, kind of a little different. Oh, um, the name's Miedemann. Adron B. Miedemann. I work for the Altamond Gas Company. East End, East End Branch Office. Ah, I remember now. It was yesterday. Huzzah on Briar Road. Oh, yes. She's right. It's him. That man. Who we also had seen before, I believe. Oh, what's this? What's that man doing over there? Look, he's trying to see the Suseki-san's lodgings. Something wrong, Mr. Narohoto. Um, excuse me, can we have a word? Uh, and I'm off. I will see you later. Woo! Yes, we spawned him outside Mr. Garadub's house that morning. He's a gas company employee. What does he have to do with this case? So, Mr. William Shamspear, you are the victim in this miserable affair, correct? Oh, heaven, oh, hell, do you command me to remember? That sweet poison that just crossed me and crossed my innocent lips. I subpoenaed him for the trial, with his doctor's permission, naturally. Hearing the testimony of the aggrieved will remove any room for doubt from the jurors' minds, I'm sure. Behold, you have only to rearrange the letters of my name to see that me's a seraph, an angel indeed. What? <laughs> me's a seraph? Okay, dude. Thus, I, I be I noble of mind, sweet of nature, and verily honest of heart, as all heavenly angels be. Because there isn't a less contrived meaning in your name. No, not at all. <laughs> Jurors seem to be very moved by this man, I'm afraid. <laughs> they're actually they're actually taking the seraph anagram idea. Sorry, I couldn't hear any of that actually. Am I repeating it? Thank you, witnesses, for your illuminating introductions. But my lord, what's the next the, the man next to Sham Mr. Shanspear doing here? The gas man, I mean. Oh, uh, what? Uh, me? Oh, uh, well, uh, now. Allow me to enlighten my learned friend. You recall, I presume, your earlier impertinence. When you suggested that the victim had another visitor to his room on the night in question. And moreover, that the victim is a compulsive liar. What? No, no, I didn't quite say that. This young chin stroker here is to convert, controvert your wild claims conclusively. Is that not so, Mr. Meter Man? Oh, uh, uh, hang on. Uh, n no, uh, I'm just here. Uh. <laughs> I hereby call for your formal testimonies. You will tell the court as loosely as possible what happened on the night in question. One may smile and smile and be a villain. Yes, it doth pain me, but let the truth be spoken. The truth of that wintry night of my discontent. God, so much Shakespeare. Hmm. Hmm. 
interesting. He see that man seems very unsure what he's doing here. Okay, the wintry night of my discontent. The snow lay about, my neighbor did cometh in the evening, bearing a gift of tea. But Mary, bitter was his drink, and when he left, I did fall prostrate on my table. Twas the tea alone did pass my lips that late hour, not else. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck this guy. <laughs> I was outside this bloke's window in the freezing cold all night, keeping an eye on his room. No one else visits his room but that short little round backed eastern fella. Wait, what did you say? You were keeping an eye on Mr. Shamster's room all night? Uh, that's right. Uh, of course, uh, the bloke's window is, is all but blocked up, isn't it? But there's a little gap in the bricks where you can see them into the room. So I spent the night trying to keep my teeth from chattering as I peered in through that. The question is, sir, why? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, now, that's because he's on my list. What a piece of work is a man! <laughs> what is a man? A miserable pile of secrets! How at you? Wherefore wouldst thou not stare into wonderment? What are you talking about? This buzzing busybody hath not part in this play. I pray thee, pay him no heed. Make no more ado about his tedious words. What'd you say about me? <laughs> Calm yourself. This court is concerned with what happened on the night in question. Nothing more. Indeed, that is so. And as the testimony we have just heard clearly reveals... There was no one other than the accused present at the time who could have carried out this crime. Well, I believe this may be the final testimony of the trial already. Now, counsel, the defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Uh, <laughs> hello! All right, the wintry night of my discontent. The snow lay about, my neighbor did cometh in the evening, bearing a gift of tea. Hold it! Hold it, Mata! To be clear, my neighbor, you are referring to the defendant, Mr. Asume. Oh, indeed, sire. Perchance thou wouldst that I call him the man from upstairs? And at what time did the mustachioed Nipponese visit you in your room? Our meeting was promised for the hour of mine, and lo, did he come to tender a gift of fragrant tea. Details which are in accordance with the defendant's own testimony, yes. And we meet were broiled in such literary debate as history hath not seen before. We did wrestle upon the floor, clad in dresses, and wielding sexual objects. By which I presume in it, wait, what he said? By which I presume he means... Their discussion about who was the stronger, Romeo or Juliet? I shall have spare to play the part of young Romeo, whilst my neighbor played the fair Juliet. Each of us dressed as would our characters be to bring weight upon a merry experiment. I do not imagine the scene. Seriously, it's already going to be haunting my dreams. Frailty, thy name is woman. Canst thou imagine how dismayed I was? Yes, I heard of the eastern art of jujitsu, but... Ne'er did I dream twould be a skill practiced by the comely maiden. Juliet be Romeo up. This is not helping our case. <laughs> I believe the court has heard enough about your earth-shattering literary debate. Perhaps you could reiterate your statement about the tea that the accused brought to your room. <laughs> He's like, enough of this shit. My liege, I am thy servant. Gladly I would do thy bidding. But Mary, bitter was his drink, and when he left, I did fall prostrate on my table. Hold it! Hold it! What do you mean by prostrate? Let me stop you there. Mr. Estime left your room at 11 o'clock, but it wasn't until after two that the poison made you collapse. That amounts to more than three hours of missing time. Is that actually a new animation for Naruhoto? I don't remember him having a tap of the paper animation, which is actually a bit more uh, akin to Phoenix. I don't know, maybe he did, I, I don't know. Oh, look at me do the worm. I wiggly, 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 woo! Oh, wiggly, 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 woo! Oh, wiggly, wiggly. <laughs> Stop wiggling on my stand, damn it! If the defendant had really put the poison in your tea, that three hour window of time is something you're going to have to explain. Gladly, tis an easy task. 
What? I had a drink of the tea not with while my guest is Terry, but after he took leave of me. Faith, twas stone cold, but at one hour post midnight, verily were my lips parched. Objection. Objection. That doesn't sound normal. Ned, tis quite ordinary, sire. After all, thou wouldst would recall our fiery debate. Amid such argument, there be no time for fiery tea. Romeo and Juliet again? Who is stronger? Mr. Shamspear, in summary, allow me to confirm. Did you not come here with the intention of naming your attacker? But of course, my liege. Twas the stooped lover of words did attempt to shuffle me off this mortal coil. Uh, we all know what that means. Twas the tea alone did pass my lips at that late hour, not else. I will say it's kind of interesting because the right now the evidence kind of supports his what he's saying here. Because there's a ring inside of his cup suggesting that his tea was sitting there for quite some time. Right? So, yeah. Hold it! So, you didn't have any kind of evening meal, dinner, supper? Ha! Fee on luxury, fee on glu- Fi- uh, Is it fee or fi? Fi- 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 I think it's fi. Fi on luxury, fi on gluttony. To etherize daily is but a waste of time. Sorry? I want that my belly were full. No more after the sun doth rise. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, when he starts just- is he like riding a horse right now? What is he doing? On a journey to Camelot! 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 Well, most heroic eating habits, I must say. Night and day do I fill my hours with the learned study of the great bard and playwright. Hence is it that there doth not in my chamber be than the costumes of mine art. That would appear to be the case, as even a rodent was found starved to death in your room. <laughs> oh my god! Now I think of it, it's not just food that was conspicuously missing from that room, is it? I don't recall seeing a single player script anywhere. For I have devoured them all. Oh god. Yif! In them? Every word be within my skull. Dost thou imagine otherwise? Right. That wasn't misleading at all. Now, could you turn around, do you think? Which brings us to the conclusion that the only way the poison could have passed the victim's lips is in the tea. Ah, this guy. Uh, ooh. I was, on the, I was outside this bloke's window in the freezing cold all night, keeping an eye on his room. Hold it! But the windows of that house have all been filled in. A historical artifact of the now defunct window tax, <laughs> which I'd like to bring up at every possible chance. Yeah, you're you're right. All bricked up horribly. But as it happens, there's a little part of the brickwork at the bottom corner that's been opened up. I was looking in through that gap. Yes, there were a few bricks loose, weren't there? And for some strange reason, a couple of bars of soap line up on the ledge outside as well. I don't like going around poking my chin at other people's business, especially on freezing cold nights. But thumbs my orders, so that's what I'll keep doing, as long as there's breath in my body. What's with all these theatricals today? <laughs> Out of interest, Mr. Meter Man, after the accused had left and returned to his own lodgings, did you see the victim leave the room at all? No, he never left. He was in that room the whole time, as far as I'm concerned. And we can therefore discount the possibility of suicide. How can you be sure of that? The police carried out a thorough investigation of the scene and found no receptacle for the poison. And since we know the victim didn't leave his room, and hence didn't dispose of the poison's container himself, it's clear that this was no attempt at suicide. Only the culprit could have removed the receptacle. Mm, is that what was stored in the soap then? Perhaps. Is there actually... I swear to God, there's actually something in there and we didn't figure out that there were, that's like an object in the fucking soap. I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> fucking Arhodo. Oh, the weird circular thing is literally an object. It's literally a receptacle for poison. Ah, yes. Lucidly explained, counsel. Thank you. Maybe it was actually the poison, like... 
made into like a solid and then he melted it in there? Really was. Can't argue with the logic. Okay. No one else visited his room but that short little round backed Eastern fella. You say a short little round backed Eastern fella. So you can't be sure it was the defendant then. Objection. Objection. Hmm. How many other short little round backed Nipponese with a mustache do you think there are in London? Well, of course, it's only a narrow gap. It was quite dark, so I didn't notice the mustache. But he showed up around nine, so I'm pretty sure of myself. And when the person you saw arrive, did he and Mr. Shamspear drink tea together? Not, sorry, I couldn't say. Why not? Because I couldn't see into the room all that well, could I? But what I did see was the silhouette of that little round back fellow wearing a pretty dress. And then the pair of them started some kind of wrestling match. I tell you, I didn't know what to make of it. <laughs> <sighs> I suppose that was the Romeo and Juliet championship battle getting underway. Mr. Meterman, allow me to confirm one final time. Apart from the accused, can you state with certainty that no one else visited the victim on the night in question? No question. Gasman's honor. Hold it! Who the fuck is it now? Ah! Ah! Hey, that was me. My lord! Goodness me! Yes, Mr. Foreman. I've kept my mouth shut and listened up to now, but this has gone on long enough. Are you all with me? Yes! Are we to understand that you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are in agreement with one another? That you've reached a unanimous decision. Do right we have. Are you all with me? Yes! Wait, no! The defense is in the middle of a cross-examination! To be honest, I was holding out a bit of, bit of hope for you, young man. Especially after you identified those few hours that followed the accused leaving the victim's room. Yes, the three missing hours, as you put it. But in the end, what difference do they do they make? Not as far as I can see. And since that's now apparent, there's, there's no real reason to delay our decision any longer. Like I was saying before, if I don't take five bob home with me tonight, the missus will blow her top. Hey, what's that? Sorry, I didn't quite catch what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like everyone's in total agreement here. Very well, let the court be apprised of your decisions. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we'll see your leanings as to the defendant's culpability. Guilty. 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 Get fucked up. Uh, Boom. We did. All, all of you? All of them? Well, it would appear the jury is indeed unanimous. Hmm. It's been a while since so I've had a good dub. <laughs> ah, so... This time, at least, it seems justice will be done. All's well that ends well, as they say. This calls for a toast, I feel. To the guilty being punished. Ah! ah! Dead. Fucking dead. Get up, Mr. Narahoto, please! The trial isn't over yet! It's not over yet, Snake! What, what do you mean, Miss now? Did you forget the mechanics of the last game? Yeah, it's been a while. It was yesterday, Mr. Arahono! Right. What about the information I found in this encyclopedia of British law I have? That obscure right that belongs to defense in these situations. Remember! Ah, all right. That thing in my jigger. The summation examination. Yes, that's right. We don't have a jury in Japanese courts, of course. But here in the British court of law, if we can reverse the decisions of a majority of the jurors, we can force the trial to continue. This trial can't end now. <sighs> okay. Whatever it takes. I just can't let that happen. Ah! The defense moves to invoke his right to a summation examination, my lord. Why am I not surprised at my learned Nipponese friend's inability to admit defeat? You choose to cling desperately to some archaic rule you barely comprehend instead of accepting the truth. 
Certainly no other defense counsel in recent times has exercised the right to a summation examination. Because they all know that once the jury's mind is set, it cannot be altered. Nevertheless, the right remains and must be upheld. The defense counsel's request is granted. This court will proceed with a summation examination, as outlined in the Encyclopedia of British Law. Thank you, my lord. Are you and your fellows prepared, Mr. Foreman? Believe me, my lord, we all know about this, about this young lad's tenacity. And we're ready for it. Very well. In that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby call upon each of you to state the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty of the crime for which he stands accused. <laughs> By the way, I realize actually now that the, the, there's one new juror here because the other juror was literally uh, <laughs> Garadip's wife, right? And she ended up coming down and being the, uh, the true culprit. Judicial findings. All right, here we go. The juror's contentions. The victim may not be well off, but he's a noble man and straight up. There's no reason to knock the man. Well, I do declare that the good gentleman has no reason to lie. In fact, I think he's rather splendid. Just look at the accused by comparison. He's Japanese, stoops all the while, and has a mustache. Very fishy. There's no evidence to suggest the gangling actor is a fraudsman, for now at least. Oh, I really don't care, like. I'll just see this trial in quickly. Three hours of missing time is nothing when you reach my age, you know. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Those were all very good reasons. And you know what? Every single one of them seems completely convinced. It would seem that all the jurors have come to the conclusion that Mr. Shamspear is a fine, upstanding, and honest citizen. If you ask me, they've all been bewitched by strange theatrical movements. And sadly, nothing Mr. Atsume has said appears to have registered at all. Well, here it goes. Let's not forget. I pleaded with the jury on Seki Sun's behalf before, and it worked. So you never know. Before we begin, it might be an idea for me to remind you exactly how a summation examination works, Mr. Naruhoto. Oh. Well, you're still very new to the British law, after all. That's true. I suppose Seki Sun's face is entirely in my hands now, too. There's always a chance I might have forgotten some crucial detail. Perhaps I should hear Susan Sun out. I wonder, should I let her talk me through it again, or not bother? Oh, good. That's interesting. They, they do they do let you refresh it. If I remember correctly, so the idea is you have to, you can press each person and then you have to basically point out which pieces of their testimony conflict with each other. I think I'm good. I think I'll be all right. Thank you for the kind offer, Miss Susito. But I've been through plenty of these summation examinations already now. I think it's important that we don't delay the start any longer than necessary. Of course, I understand. I'm quite sure you're right. If you're confused about anything at any point, you can turn to me for advice whenever you'd like. I'll be here for you. That's sweet. The key to this really is listening carefully to each your statement. Finding two that are contradictory and pitting the corresponding jurors against each other. And it, it just goes straight up and tells me, tells me anyway right there. Without further ado, please, counsel, proceed with the summation examination. Sometimes you have to also, like, press them, though. Like, get more information from them before you get to, like... The, the, the root of their uh, claim. Yes, my lord. Oh, I'm back here. Hello there. Uh, me too. Uh, why, 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 why am I still here? The defense is rebuttal. Okay. Um, the victim may be well off, but he's a noble man. And uh, straight up, there's no reason to doubt the man. So, if I remember right, it's like a little button system, right? Yeah. Uh, I do declare the good gentleman has no reason to lie. In fact, I think he's rather splendid. Just looking at the accused by comparison, he's Japanese, stoops all the while, and has a mustache. Very fishy. There's no evidence suggesting the gangling actor is a fraudsman, for now at least. I don't really care. I just need to start here quickly. All right, I think we should probably press him. Hold it. Hold it. You keep talking about needing to take home some money. What's that all about, sir? Finish, lass. That's what it's about. What's that? We're talking about the dummy at Hyde Park. All time. It was the Queen's Cup last week, wasn't it? Uh, Derby? It was a dead cert. That's the thing. I couldn't lose. So I took my life through savings, like. But then, that hopeless old man went it. did the unthinkable. Ah, oh, let's do it for this last. Oh, dear. I think it's clear what happened, isn't it? This is the day that Mrs. used to save us for a trip down the pub. So come on, let us finish live now. Just give it up. No, that's not going to happen. 
Really? Okay, so I didn't get anything from that. <laughs> Three hours missing of time is nothing when you reach my age, you know. Nothing at all. Uh, <laughs> maybe I could counter with each other with these two? I'm gonna press him. See if he, I can elaborate more, maybe. What do you really mean by that, sir? Well, I'm not one to boast, but I get up at five every morning, I do. At five? You're really an early riser then, aren't you? Eh, what's that now? I said you're really an early, early riser. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I like to while away the hours in the evening reading books as well. But by about two in the morning, I'm usually too tired to go on. He sleeps at two in the morning and gets up at five? Holy snikes! My, that means he only has three hours of sleep each night. Mm, what's that, dear? Only three hours of sleep each night! That's right, you see? Three hours of missing time. Like I said, it's not much, is it? This really isn't helping. <laughs> okay, okay, no, 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 it's fine. We're fine. Uh, there's no evidence to suggest the gangly actress a frostman for now, at least. A fraudsman? What do you mean by that, madam? It really is a most tiresome problem for the, com the, for the company. Most irritating. We can be absolutely certain that a customer is stealing from us, but without hard evidence. We can't ima or even threaten to take action for fear of being sued. I'm sorry, you lost me a little there. Who are you? I'm the wife of August, August Augustus Altamont, owner of the Altamont Gas Company. Good gracious, Altamont Gas, you say? Gas is the future of energy in this country and around the globe, but proper handling is essential. As I'm sure our employee from the East End branch office would be first to agree. A absolutely, Lake Wimby. Gotta be used properly. Altamont Gas is the best in the world, of course. Ah, I think we may have solved the mystery of the bow from earlier, Mr. Narahodo. Right, he bowed in defense of his employer to his employer's wife, did he? Ah, so, would I be right in assuming that the reason Mr. Meter Man was watching what Mr. Shamsphere was up to in his room? I'm afraid that there's no end to the lengths that the population of the East End will go to in order to steal our gas. So I really have no choice when the company identifies somebody as a possible frostman. But to dispatch a worker to watch the suspect day and night, we're very thorough on our investigations. Ah, uh, I see. So you mean Mr. Shamespear is? I wouldn't come out and say it in public. But you can finish that sentence with a grubby little gas thief. You have noticed the public gallery in here, have you? Haven't you? <laughs> the eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Faith wouldst thou wound me, wound me with thy words, were I to let them penetrate the skin. But Sarah's hear not insults, only choirs of the angels in song. We may not have evidence yet, but my workers won't stop buzzing around you till they find it. And when they do, you'll find yourself blasted back to the your angelic house in an Altamont El 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 gas explosion. So Mr. Shakespeare has been stealing gas. I wonder, juror number four, if you wouldn't mind adding the information to your statement. My pleasure. Was it the bit about ripping that thief apart you enjoyed? A little before the part about object, about object violence, if it's not too much trouble. Yes, of course. This could be it. This could shift the balance. Okay. The victim puts on a fine performance, but in reality is a common thief of my company's gas. Okay, so hers with his. But it's no man's strip. Uh. Objection. What? Wait, really? That didn't count? He's a no man's strip. There's no reason to doubt the man. What? That's just like that totally contradicts it. I mean, he's a common thief of my cast company. He may not be well off, but he's a nobleman and straight up. There's no reason to doubt the man. Maybe I need to press him? It seems like it should be good enough. I guess I'll press this guy. Hold it. Well, there are plenty of people in London who seem noble, but poor. Couldn't some of them also be liars? I have no doubt about it. Like that shaky cloud of yours, for example. 
Absolutely not. Mr. Asumi is no liar. Look, the point is, the only thing that passed the victim's lips that night was that Japanese man's tea. When you take the gasman's testimony into account as well, the truth couldn't be any clearer. Ah, well, it's alarmingly logical. But let me be frank here. I'm a gentleman with the gentleman's values. If it turns out that the old Shakespearean chum is around liar after all, I'm glad I changed my decision about the defendant. And I'm sure my fellow gentlemen on the jury would do the same. Isn't that right? Well, um, yes, perhaps. Though I don't see it happening. Yeah, what's that? Only gen on the end here, you know? Yeah, just speak up. Ah! Well, I really don't care about all this nonsense. Just need this trial to be over. How many gentlemen do we actually have on the jury then? All right, sir. I'm gonna hold you to that. Don't forget what you said. <sighs> oh. Okay, there we go. All right, if you can show me the victim's a liar, I'll reconsider my position. All right, there we go. Objection. I had to wait for that one. Those two statements clearly contradict, contradict each other. Goodness gracious. To whose statements do you refer, counsel? Juror number one. Eh, what are you yelling about, lad? I presume you've heard juror number four's statement made by the wife of the owner of Altamont Gas. Well, yes. Victim, you claim to be a noble, straight up, straight up man. In fact, turns out to be a common thief. So the good lady says, but there's no evidence, is there? You and I both heard them as say as much. It's true, we don't have evidence as such, just yet. But the claims are baseless, you know. What? You heard me, seeing it as his operation has already been compromised. I would suggest that the court hears the testimony from our East End branch office employee over there. I'll do whatever you say, my lady. Gas means honor. Juror number one. You say you're a man of your word. If I could show that Mr. Shams here is a liar, you assured me that you would reconsider your decision about the defendant's guilt. Hmm. Yes, I did say that. As a man of honor, I hold to it. And I'm sure the other gentleman of the jury will. will. Me? Well, oh well, yes. Now that we found out the man's a liar, perhaps we ought to consider the matter further. Well, if I'm perfectly honest, I haven't heard a goddamn demon thing of, have we, of what you've all been saying. So this means you'll have to recap a few points that would suit me down to the, down to the ground. Oh no, I'm not having any part of this. We'll start all over and done with. In that case, I shall change my leaning. So, Mr. William Shams, if that's your real name, we are the jury demand to know exactly what kind of man you really are. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Hey, look, guys. The flames went in there and it didn't lag the game. <laughs> that I remember from the version of the game I had before the first one, where it was like, that those flames would lag the fuck out of the game. And sometimes it, like... I had to restart after that happened too. The laggy frame rate actually like lingered even after the flames had landed there. Not anymore though. This is the power of the PC. PC master race. That's four jurors. Four for not guilty. Yes, Mr. Arahodo. Victory. I was gonna make the first one relatively easy though. I, I still say a little bullshit that like technically that, that there was a contradiction there between the first guy and the, the woman. I just had to press him and get him to say, his extra thing, but it was still a fucking contradiction. So fuck you, game. Order, order. Well, this is quite extraordinary, I must say. As a result of the defense's summation examination, the jury's leaning has changed. Now only two jurors say guilty, whereas four say not guilty. I therefore declare this court to be in a state of disaccord and order the trial to continue. Hmm. <sighs> Good. I was afraid this would end too quickly. <sighs> you have spoiled the bouquet, Mr. Shamspear. Oh dear. The ladies and gentlemen of the jury now find they are unable to trust you, the victim. Mm. But you gods will give us some faults to make us men. So God mend me, I do swear. This gasman speaketh that which concerns him most, not but gas, not but thin air. I it burneth bright a while. 
but it hath no substance and it doth wreak foul. Oi, what'd you say? Do I take it, Mr. Shamspear, that you deny the allegations of gas thievery? Most heartily, my lord. Hast thou forgot? I am as a serf, an angel. Noble of mind, sweet of nature, and verily, hardest of, hardest of heart. Arg! You flowery, mouth pompous beanpole. Just because I haven't got the evidence yet. Mr. Shamspear, if, in fact, you are not noble of mind, sweet of nature, or honest of heart, if you are a liar, then your testimony should have no sway in this courtroom. It is my considered opinion that at the present time, no other possible culprit for this crime has been identified. All testimony heard by the court thus far heavily implicates the defendant. In short, it would not be unreasonable at this stage for me to rule on the case. Oh no. However, in light of the fact that the jury has expressed concern about the fidelity of this witness, I believe it would be inappropriate for this court not to pursue the point further. Objection! Objection! I assure you, my lord, that it would be a waste of the court's time. The gas in this case are unrelated. Juror number four. Yes? Did you say before that although you had no hard evidence to prove this man has been stealing gas, you have strong grounds for suspecting him? That's right, we do. Don't we, hmm, worker? Absolutely, Lady Quimby. Gasman's honor. Very well, then. We will hear your testimony now. You will tell the court precisely why you believe the victim, Mr. William Shanspear, has been stealing gas. Yes, my lord. It'll be my pleasure. On the Altamont got me. Altamont gas. If I may, my lord. Go ahead, madam. This worker's testimony may have a significant bearing on the good name of my husband's company. Therefore, I should like to take the stand alongside him in a supervisory role, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, wahoo! Oh yeah! Sweet as honey! Oh yeah, 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 yeah! Very well. As an exception, I shall honor your request. Isn't it? Th thank God we just happened to have the uh, uh, gas company laid up here as a juror, right? <laughs> thank God. Of all the people in the world. Thank you, my lord. You wait till the boss gives you an earful. Oh, it's gonna sting. You mark my words. So, we will both testify before the court on the subject of the illegal consumption of the Altamont Gas Company's fuel. Yes. Is that clear, my good man? Clear as Altamont Gas, my lady. Which is the clearest in the world? Heh <laughs> oh. <laughs> heh. That's funny. Do you think the gas has gone to his head, Miss Isidale? I think the man is just a very dedicated employee, Mr. Odo. <laughs> All right, I think this is probably a good place to end things here for now. I think we've been going for a while, but we're off to a good start. I am definitely intrigued. This is intriguing. I, I do think it is going to be the case then that uh, Shakespeare set all this up, right? But it's not totally clear on the motive yet. But anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite and subscribe if you're not already become Piggy Penguin. Aboard this LP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. God damn, does it feel good to be voice of Van Zeeks again? He's so much fucking fun to voice. And he's just so fucking cool, man. He's just so cool. <laughs> uh, but anyway, guys, as always, till next time. Stay classy!